go ahead and get started with an opening statement. Oh, good week, 4-0. Oh. Um, I thought outstanding, unbelievable defense. I mean, zero errors in the four games. I thought our offense was one of the most impressive things that I've seen in, in a quite a long time. Um, I believe in the South Carolina series, we batted 410 as, as a team. And I mean, that's just really, really impressive. <clears throat> I thought our, our pitching was okay um, at times. I mean, we, we put too many people on base, but then you look at the results that they had. And I believe on Sunday, I mean, we threw, we had a one hitter going into the fifth, um, just gave up some free passes. And I think that's just counterattacking playing an aggressive team versus a passive team, which the pitchers have to experience that to be able to recognize it. But real happy with the 4-0, and obviously. All right, uh, Colin and Natalie. Coach, I know we talked a lot about Jenna Laird's presence and immediate impact and how it's not really surprised you, but freshman of the week, I think not the first time she's done that, just uh, her performance so far this season and, and this past week in particular. You know, I, I'm going to give her the nickname Quiet Thunder um, because her presence, she is so in control of everything, of her emotions and her ability. She doesn't get outside of herself, but then she, she gives us this big bang. Um, she's just so consistent with being consistent. And to get that out of a freshman is unheard of. Um, you know, defensively, I mean, some of the plays that she makes, she makes them like a senior. They're ridiculous. And then what she adds offensively, it's like every time she comes up, she knows exactly what she's called upon to do. If that's drive in a run to get an RBI, she comes through with that. If that's to get on base, to set up the table for everyone who's batting behind her. I mean, she's in such control of her ability. It's very impressive. And, and I'm, I'm so excited to see that she's being rewarded for what she's doing week to week. Hey, Coach, you know, top to bottom, this lineup at the plate, anyone can get a hit pretty much at any time. What do you like about this lineup that you have going now? You mentioned, you know, they help each other out when they come, you know, back into the dugout, stuff like that. But what do you like from this lineup that you have going for you? I mean, it makes my job really easy, coaching third. Um, you know, I don't have to do a lot of management when it comes to offensively. And I don't have to pray that people get on base and, and the hot hitters coming up at the time. It's, you know, everybody's hot. And really right now our, our motto is just pass the bat, like have a quality at bat, get on base, drive in runs, do what you need to do in order to, to help the team be successful, but pass the bat to the person behind you. And if you're doing that, then, then it's almost like we don't have a top in the bottom of the lineup. It's everyone is a threat. I mean, you look at what Abby George is doing in the nine hole. Um, she's another leadoff hitter and she's getting on base to set it up for the top of our lineup. So I mean, I wouldn't want to throw to our, our offense because, again, anybody can hit it out. Everybody is, is a tough out, and that just puts so much pressure on the opposing team and the pitcher when you really can't take a, a batter off. You have Ben and then Colin. Larissa, you're leading the league in home runs, but you got nine different players that have hit a home run. Uh, I think only one of those only has one. I mean, this is multiple production from, you know, power positions. Maybe this is a better question for Chris, but I'm, I'm sure you could give us some insight. What is it in the technique that's allowing so many different players in your lineup to hit for power? Uh, the first thing is that we don't get cheated. And I've heard Chris say to the offense a number of times, if you check swing, don't come back to our dugout. So there's no uncertainty. Like when you decide to swing, you're going to swing full speed. So having that, they trust what they're doing. And if they're going to bat on the ball, it's going to travel a long way. It's going to be hit hard. And the more, more balls that are going to be hit hard, the more you can obviously, the more pressure you're putting on the defense. Um, I mean, a lot of it is mechanical and they've spent so much time on their mechanics and making sure that they're utilizing their bodies, but their whole, their way that they swing, their body is in sequence. And this goes to our, our strength coach where we spent a lot of time with him on really understanding rotational sports where he's maximizing from the core and driving the knee into the swing and what their scap and, and their lats do in the swing to be able to maximize what the female athlete can do. Larissa, I, uh, I didn't even notice until the series was over. So I don't know if she was there or not, but Alex Honnold played at SLU, but then didn't play with South Carolina. It was is everything okay there. Is she, is she good? Yeah, she's healthy. I mean, Kendall Bailey's hot. So um, that's really the, the, the main reason is Kendall is playing so unbelievably well right now. Um, you know, I'm not having to make adjustments late in the game because of what she's doing early on. So I'm, I'm just riding that horse. 
and Natalie and Ben. Yeah, you know, not to jump ahead of LSU here, but I don't know if we'll get to talk to you before this, that Kansas game. What do you like uh, about that matchup? That's a, obviously a great rivalry in Missouri sports, but, you know, what do you like, especially for the fans? You know, rivalries are what makes sport great. And I love them. I love the, the pride that both universities have in both, both institutions and really how much value this single game means. Um, does it add more pressure? Yeah, it absolutely adds more pressure. Um, but it's fun. And that's really what athletics is all about. So yeah, I'm not looking past LSU, but I do know that it is coming up pretty quickly. And Kansas is playing very, very well right now. So we have to make sure that obviously we take care of LSU and then we can look on to Kansas. But I mean, rivalry games are great. And I'm glad to see that we have that rivalry back. Larissa, you fell behind twice at South Carolina, but just immediately came right back. Um, is this team kind of building a confidence that um, you're never out of a game. You can always come back. I mean, we, we know we're never out of a game. Um, and I think that was really shown against Georgia, even though we came up on the short end, the amount of runs that we were able to put, put up just shows our offense, what we're capable of doing. Um, after Jordan gave up four runs in that first inning, I immediately went to her and I said, we're coming back from this. Like, we don't have to throw shutouts. We don't have to just, you know, put up one run and, and expect our pitchers to throw shutouts. We know we can score multiple. I mean, we're averaging over seven runs a game right now, and I think we're ranked nationally in that category. Um, so it takes a little pressure off of our pitchers to know that we don't have to go out and throw goose eggs and you know strike out double digits. That the ball is going to be put in play a little bit. Um, but again, at the same time, when we're visit, when we're playing at home, we know we have that opportunity in the bottom of the seventh inning. That if we get the tying run up or the winning run up, we we're going to win that ball game. Hey, Coach, uh, can, can you remember uh, the last time you've, you've gone against a player like Alea Andrews who covers so much ground and center like she does? And and it's really fun to watch, but maybe not so fun when she's robbing your teams of gappers or singles or whatever. Well, hopefully she's not robbing us of anything. But, I mean, she is a special, talented athlete. Um, you know, I think Kim Wirt is very similar at third base. When, when you look at Kim Wirt and the number of base hits that she takes away – Andrews is doing the same thing in the outfield. So, I mean, players like that, you just sit back and you applaud their talent and their ability. And then, you know, you just, you hopefully they don't make the difference in the game. But I mean, someone like that is, is very, very talented. And, and I'm glad to see that she's playing in our conference. Natalie? You know, this matchup with LSU, what are some things you're looking for with, from them? And uh, what are you watching for? Very well coached team. Um, all solid the whole way through. They have a great pitching staff. Um, they always have, and, and I have a lot of respect for Coach Serena and what she does within her pitching staff. Um, so I know that they're going to be able to manage the game. They manage their game very, very well. Um, the, the thing that we're going to have to be paying attention to is that our pitchers keep their hitting their hitters off balance. When we live on one side of the plate, um, it's going to catch up to us. So we have to be able to change speeds, change location, keep them off balance, um, I'll continue to make pitching changes when we need to, um, if that's something that we need to do. But I just know that LSU likes to run. They put a lot of pressure on the defense. So we're going to have to be making sure that we're playing at that speed um, and also making them uncomfortable so they're not, they're not playing at the speed that they're comfortable of. Any more questions for Coach? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you next week.